Hey guys, so we had this question come in to help us this morning from a gentleman named Jake and Jake had a question about how to fit a cabinet into this space. So as you can see, um, you've got a run of wall cabinets that are returning back onto another wall where we've got an angle. So it's like the question is, you know, how do we um, accommodate that shape in a uh, wall cabinet? Now, I would have a couple of questions about the way you want to go about this. So there's just something um, to consider there. But like, what I mean by that is, you know, it, it's really a design choice at this point. Like, do you want to continue what you've done with the base cabinets and run these um, on that same line until they run back into the cabinet? Of course, that's probably going to make that that right hand door really difficult to open um, or do you want to kind of come to a certain point and then return back at a certain point keeping a similar offset back um, from the bench top to the wall cabinets so you know you've got a couple of choices to make but either way the way you approach it would be the same in terms of you know how to, to do that in mosaic with the new uh, CAD shaping tools so version 14 in case you're not aware we've added the CAD functionality so you can go click on CAD and that's going to open some CAD tools. Now, you know, you can you can go ahead with your layers and set this to like, you know, a hidden line view or a, you know, field with color or, you know, a field with texture, whatever you find makes it easier to, um, you know, kind of visualize this. But what I can see, I've got like a, the cabinet here and then the panel there, um, you know, so you can, you could probably also um, with your layers look at like, turning off base cabinets, um, you know, and maybe turning off toes just to avoid any confusion, you know, and you can go through and you can kind of turn off components just to get a bit of a shot of this, but you can also leave it all on if you'd like, um, as long as you've got a bit of an idea of, of where you're kind of drawing these lines. So what I'll do then is click on the line tool. Um, so the first thing I kind of want to do is figure out like, how do I get a line going like along the same angle back to, you know, wherever I want that to land. And the best way to do that is to click on a, a point, you know, along that same line and then if you hover over a point on this side of it what mosaic's going to do it's going to make it really easy just to continue you can see as long as i keep my mouse relatively along that same line it's going to continue it'll try and snap off and go in 15 mil kind of increments but if you keep it like relatively close and it's really easy to pull it back um, it's going to allow you to do that and i'm just going to run it past so that's going to give me like my starting point right because that's my parallel line running from you know along this run of cabinets all the way to you know where they would effectively need to meet this panel here so then the next question is okay how do i get the outside of the panel um, so you know what you want to do with your snap tool over here is toggle it on to have the lightning bolt symbol which means it's precision snapping which makes everything a snap point you know so at this point now i can go to the outside of the panel and I can draw a line coming right back along the outside of that panel. Whether I go all the way to the end or just, you know, slightly past, it, it's up to me really at that point. So I have there now like a line coming back this way, you know, and I guess the question might be if I wanted to do this like on a, you know, at a point where a certain distance back, I'm going to return back and make that square. Um, that might be something to consider, you know, so, you know, maybe uh, I could like draw a line back this way and I could see that's 275.5 you know so if I was to do this line again I could click on that line delete it and I could draw that line again and go well from the front let's come down to 75.5 and when you've got that just press enter and it's going to draw that line in for you and now I can click that point and bring it across in you know that direction so effectively my question is am, am i trying to draw a cabinet in here that is like that shape you know or am i trying to draw a cabinet that goes straight to the wall and takes up this void space here and that's where it really comes down to a personal design preference and you know thinking about doors and accessibility and that kind of thing um either way your call um so th that's that's going to show you you know both approaches on how to do it uh in this case what i'm actually going to do is kind of leave it like that um i'm going to go uh, ahead and uh, you know clear this up so I'm going to delete that line and I'm going to do it this way so I'm going to like a assume that you want to kind of go just to this point so let's go ahead now and draw some lines at the back of this really to accommodate kind of our, our back when you're just picking up snap points it's really easy just to go back to your standard magnet um, you're not going to have too many points that are going to get in your way there or it's not going to try and jump to too many snap points um, 
So, you know, I'm drawing in all these these points now, effectively. Um, and I will need another one from there back to that point there. And now I just need to trim up the line. So I need to go to my trim tool and get rid of that, that segment. And then obviously the, the long segment there, because effectively what I want to be left with here is this um, closed geometry here. So you can see if I put a little window selection around it, my kind of line there is indicating that closed geometry. You know, you can always change the color as well. You know, I could make it red or something just so it, it stands out and I, I can see the kind of space a lot clearer. Um, but what I want to do there is just right click on that now and choose to join that group. So now that I've got a, a joined group geometry, a um, couple of important things to note. Obviously, from a, a 2D uh, perspective in elevation, we don't really know that like that's really sitting on the floor. So, you know, if I take a wall cabinet here and just drag that into the opening, Mosaic's going to do a really great job of recognizing that that is a enclosed shape. And it asks us, do you want to automatically conform the shape of this wall cabinet to that opening? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And that's going to do the bulk of the work for me, right? So that's going to get me a two-door wall cabinet shaped exactly to that. And again, if I had gone back this way, it would have taken that shape. So it makes it super easy to utilize CAD tools to just program um, you know, a, a cabinet that fits exactly in the opening that you have. Um, so let's just have a look here. Uh, actually looks like when I, looking back, I'm going to undo that because what I, I think I've done there is I've picked up the um, base cabinet point, not the wall cabinet point. Um, so let's undo a couple of steps here. And so we're not, we're not joined. Um, and what we'll do is we'll delete this line. So I'll go back into the CAD function. I'm going to click on this point here and delete that one. Uh, I'm going to extend extend that out. Now, actually, I'll use the ability to show you how to use the extend tool for this one. So again, I'm going to go back to my precision snap in to get the outside of that panel and bring that line down to here. Uh, and again, we'll uh, let's just take all our lines and make them red so they're super obvious. So what I need to do now is extend this line out to this one and this one down to this one. So you've got an extend tool or E for the shortcut. So basically you hover over the line, you click there once and then you click to where it is extending to. Um, so super easy, this one to this one. And then I wanna do my trim and trim away this line. So lots of useful CAD tools to really help you lay that out exactly as you want. And then yeah, I can go ahead and, and join that now. And now I can go ahead and re-enter my cabinet and conform that to the shape. So again, um, regardless whether you kind of get it right first go, you've got the ability. Now, as I mentioned, um, it would be sitting down on the floor like um, because it, it's the shape doesn't know where it needs to sit and it's just going to conform to that and then drop it onto the ground. So a couple of things you want to do there is check what um, height your overhead cabinets are. So 750 here in, um, in Jake's design. So we're going to go ahead and go 750 as the opening and then our elevation, uh, I think is 1500. Oops, I'll make sure I type that right, 1500 enter and that's going to lift that up let's go back to the 3d view now and we can see that we've now got that set correctly so as you can see very easy to then you know get the correct shaped cabinet um, shaped perfectly for that wall now a couple of things you're probably going to want to do here is decide what's going to happen in this corner so that's really the make um, if you open this up and we look at this obviously you know, your door isn't going to be able to hinge like that. I would bring my door back and I would extend my end out and then I'd cut my end um, to the correct shape on a panel saw. So what I would do there is go to the shape tab and I'm going to go to that front edge, press adjust. And then on the right, I'm going to say, look, take about 20 millimeters off. The amount you take off, you know, might be 20, 21, depending on, you know, what um, door thickness and everything you're working with. And then on this side, I'm going to go to adjust and on my left edge adjustment, I'm probably going to push it forward. Uh, you know, 16 mil material is probably going to go forward like 18 mil, but like it doesn't really matter. Even if you go 20, um, you know, you're going to cut that on a panel saw anyway. So it just depends if you want to get it like bang on, um, you know, so you can just take your short point and cut it square. But like whether you oversize it, mark it and then cut it, it's, it's your call. Um, that What that's doing effectively is is making sure that you're uh, your door comes back and um, you know 
doesn't doesn't hit that that panel that's there you know so you've got a bit of clearance between your door and your panel and then you know make sure that you can cut that end and you know edge that accordingly and, and have a you know a cabinet that works um, obviously last thing you kind of need to do there is just um, bring your bulkhead across to the wall so you could go in to the elevation there grab that drag that across um, you know to tidy that end up and you may want to um, even extend it a little bit further to accommodate the rest of that so um, it will kind of snap to the wall but you could also go into that and um, you know maybe oversize it um, to give you a bit of extra um, clearance on that right hand side to make sure that you can you know trim that effectively where needed so then now you've got um, that whole thing completed so that's really how you can leverage the shaping tools in Mosaic to um, in version 14 to help you build cabinets that need to be fitted precisely to an opening. Uh, and as I mentioned, like you know, looking at that, it's, it's still going to be pretty tight to get into that cabinet. So whether you do want to, you know, pick a point and return that square, again, uh, you know, your 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 balance in form over function at some point, right? So um, up to the designer um, to make that call, but. Uh, that's the tools that will help you do it. Hope that helps, Jake, and uh, let us know if there's any other questions. Cheers.